Uh, How embarrassing. Arriba. Why? What? Because the carnival was last weekend. Oh. And now, seven days later, here come friendly fires in all their scantily clad carnival outfits. It's so last On the back week. of a float. Oh. Everyone's gone. That's pathetic. The police are tidying up the limbs. Friendly fires, you know, are much nicer than unfriendly fires. Uh who are awful they're you know an unfriendly a friendly fire generally is nicer if yeah. you get taken out by friendly fire in a war situation oh you're thinking it's, of oh them. oh oh that's all right yeah like that, that. are you sure no i'm that's, not sure that's not only disrespectful it's inaccurate uh, factually <laughs> i was thinking well, well no of... we can't say that it's inaccurate factually really yeah for sure we haven't experienced it right but i was thinking more of just you know like a, a fire in a hearth you mm. know at home Right. And uh, okay. so, so you're warming your cockles mm. and uh, maybe toasting some tea cakes, that kind of thing. My cockles, are, I have to warm one at one at a time. Well, this is what I'm saying. They're too big to fit in front of the fire. It's fine if you've got a friendly fire. But if you had an unfriendly fire, like a tongue, a fire might... Mm. I'm going to stop because uh, then I'll have to start talking about tongues and cockles. And that's no good. At five minutes past nine on BBC Six Music. This yeah, good is, morning. Uh, Adam and Joe here. I'm Adam. I'm Joe. Uh, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes between our silly, smug voices. You just have to, uh, hopefully we're panned to different sides of the stereo spectrum, right, Claire? No. No. Oh, we're in the middle. I can't get anything done. So we're having some desk problems. But we've got a very exciting show for you this morning, listeners. We've got a special guest <sighs> in the studio. We we'll reveal him or her, or it, later. Uh, plus, we've got the result, the results of Sung Wars, mm -hmm. the results of Song Wars coming up, and all sorts of exciting chit chat. The nation's favourite feature. I've got a cat crisis. Oh, what's the matter with you? I need cat? help. Well, it's, it's not to do with my cat. Right. I'll tell you about that a bit later. I need help from cat experts. All right. Listen, let's have some more music before we hear about Joe's cat problems. Uh, did you? You didn't choose this one, did you, Joe? I'm assuming. Uh, in a very reductive way that maybe you did because it's Dr. Dre and he's a member of the hip-hop community and you like hip-hop? No, it is Dr. Dre, but it's part of the BBC's remit to check in and make sure that he is still Dre every few months. <laughs> so that this is just uh, to tick that box, really. Here it is. That's Dr. Dre, MD, uh, advocating a whole lot of irresponsible activity that we do not endorse here at the BBC. What Smoking. kind of... Smoking. Yeah. Just generally, per se, is... Is that uh, what he's saying in there? Yeah, he's encouraging you to smoke till you go to sleep. Really? It's a very stupid thing to do. What kind it of doctor makes is you he? very ill. Yeah. Well, exactly. I think he should be uh, struck, struck off. off. And also talking about sticky icky icky, which uh, I think is just Pritt stick. It's, it's misusing Pritt stick and getting it all over the shop. <sighs> Well, so that's a disgrace. Just don't follow those instructions if you're... Right, what are we doing? Playing it on the BBC? What's happened to the BBC? It used to be so good. The... So you used to be able to take moral guidance from it. Well, the Everybody port used to speak properly. of the BBC used mm. to be specially wired in order to uh, eliminate rappers from the inside well, the castle. Well, rightly so. Exactly. But standards have really slipped. It's all going down the tubes. Oh, my Lord. So listen, man, what was your cat problem? Yeah, cat problem. Uh... I need help from listeners who understand cat politics. We've got a cat. Yeah. Uh, you love she's, cats. She's called Macy. I do. I'm keen on cats in, in general, but I'm not mad about it. I've only got one. You are mad. I've only got one cat. I love Called cats. Macy. Didn't even get it myself. Yeah. It, she, she just turned up when we bought our house. She needed someone to look after her. Uh, she behaved all nice, so we, so we took her in, and now she basically runs our lives, as, right. as cats do. Only lets us stroke her when she feels like it. And she's Basically, got... she rules the roost. Right. Right. She's got very right wing. Is that what you're going to say? She's very, very right wing. Supports, um, well, very keen on Cameron, you know. Yeah. Uh, loves John McCain. Loves John McCain. Exactly. Really likes that new woman, Michael Palin. That's Michelle Palin. <laughs> Michael Palin. Michael yeah. Palin's daughter. Yeah. That's really swung her boat. Ripping yarns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bear killing yarns. <laughs> anyway, we've got a very right wing cat. Um, and today, uh, yesterday, in fact, at our back door, I uh, guess what turns up? A cat pop. A kitten. A kitten? The me the most amazingly sweet kitten you've ever seen, with a huge head and a tiny body. Macy's kitten? No, not her kitten. Just well, I don't know. It could, how can you tell? It looks a bit like Macy crossed with the local neighbourhood tomcat. Right. Stupid face. <laughs> looks like a combination. Anyway, this giant-headed kitten turns up. Yeah. Sweetest kitten you've ever seen, with misty eyes. Obviously got cataracts or whatever you get in your eyes. Only a kitten, though. Doggeracts. Misted over That's eyes. What they get. Meowing so sweetly, uh, looking very thin. Right. So we thought, well, we got it. We got to help this cat. Are you sure it wasn't Kylie Minogue? Yeah. It could have been Kylie Minogue. She's very small. That's what she looks huge like. Huge head. Yeah. Quite attractive. 
it's probably Kylie. Anyway, we don't know what to do because our, our existing cat is now very upset at this interloper. Fair enough. Hissing, uh, you know, her, her tail is going all brushy, mm -hmm. standing on end. She really doesn't like this new kitten. Mm. But the new kitten is so in need of help. Mewing. Imagine the little misty... And it had a cough this morning. Oh. When I first saw it, I thought, nah, it belongs to somebody. I kind of gave it a bit of an inspection and, and, and a sniff. I smelt its fur to see whether it had been sleeping outside. It didn't smell like it had. But this morning, after all the rain, it's turned up with a little hacking cough. Are you... <coughs> oh. Not really like Does, that. Are you More sure it's not like a little disease bag you've allowed into your house? Well, should I should I banish it because it has disease? Because you don't really like diseases. You're quite a clen... You, yeah, you're not a clen. clen no, freak. I'm a clen. You, you love clen. I am a clen. <laughs> you love things to be clen. <laughs> it's an acronym for, for <laughs> people who are paranoid about cleanliness. <laughs> but you, you are quite... You, like, you don't like people being around you if they've got colds and stuff. So that's true, though, isn't it? <laughs> no, not really. But if you got a, if someone's got a cold, you say, "Have you got a cold?" And like you, you sort of back off from them because you don't want to get the cold. Fair well, enough. For the sake of the conversation, I'll say yes. That's fair that's enough. Actually, not true. I'm not yes. saying you're freakish. <laughs> I'm just saying you don't really what like. What should that I do about this cat? But what? Get rid of it. What do you mean, get rid of it? It's an, it's in need. It's going to die. It's, it's going to go blind and it's going to die. Shaped disease bag you've let into your house. What should I? I'm going to take it to the vet to see if it's chipped. Chipped. Yeah. What, like the ceramic? But how do I get my existing cat over this little kitten? How do I make my existing cat accept it? What should I do with the little kitten? It's just so far off my radar, I would never have let the little <laughs> well, thing that's in that's why there I'm asking the, the listeners. Place. What, you'd just leave it out there to die? Mm, yes. Never mind, you poor little brave thing. I you're blind and you have bronchitis. <laughs> There's little hope for you. Good luck, enjoy your two days of suffering. And... I'd say, uh, that's the game. That's the game. It's like Dr. Dre. Get out there, player. With a little cat. <laughs> yeah. Yo, he's a little pussy cat outside. That's the game. Hey, be it, a true player. Survive it's a little bit of milk for He'd you. Get some Pritt stick and a cigarette. <laughs> and send <laughs> it all, packing. It's all part of the game, yo. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll see you. Maybe I won't. That's what vets are like in the hood. <laughs> Just uh, an Uzi and a and a counter. Well, let's see if our listeners can provide you with some good advice. Gotta help the kitten. In the meantime, here's Weezer with Troublemaker. Jolly good. Um, that's Weezer with Troublemaker. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I thought you were going to say something there. No, you were wrong. In the, when we, the song was playing, you were saying, oh yeah, I've got this one covered, I'm going to do the talking here. You okay. didn't say those exact words, because that no. would... Obviously be pathetic. Here's the thing to say then. Uh, this is Adam and Joe, by the way, on BBC Six Music. Have you ever, um, or you know if you're our age, which is uh, getting on a bit now, uh, your musical awareness straddled the period of uh, vinyl and CD. Mm -hmm. So there was a wonderful period when you'd go and buy everything you had on vinyl on CD. Mm. And in, during that process, you'd rediscover bands that you maybe hadn't listened to for sure. since you were a kid. Yeah, because when we were kids and first started buying pop, we'd buy it on on record on plastic record albums. We're format straddlers. Yeah, so occasionally uh, I come across a band that I haven't done that to yet. Mm. They're few and far between. I feel I've pretty much done the whole process. But last week I stumbled upon a band whose almost entire output I owned when I was a nipper. You too, but I hadn't. <laughs> thankfully, not you two. Oh. Don't own any you two. I don't think. <laughs> Do you not? My girlfriend does, not I'm, me. Unforgettable fire. So anyway, I, yeah, I forgot about it. Um, <laughs> so I discovered the band. I rediscovered the band Heaven Seventeen. You might have heard of them. <laughs> They're a synthesizer <laughs> band from Sheffield. Yeah, uh, very big in the eighties. And a lot of uh, Martin, what's he called, Martin? No, Martin Gregory. Martin Ware. Gregory, Martin Ware, there you go. He was the lead singer. A lot of his singing style, I think, I've kind of borrowed for some of Glenn my... Glenn Gregory. ...more pompous Song Wars tracks. Right. Um, but I hadn't listened to their stuff since I had it on cassette. Cause single, oh, even. Wow. And their album, uh, How Men Are, big 80s noise, that was one of the first albums I had on cassette on a Walkman. Mm. And I used to love the stereo panning. Do you remember albums that you had when you first had a Walkman and you used to yeah. dig just the stupid gratuitous right and left panning? Yeah, The Doors' first album is good for that. Really? Some, sometimes if you listen in, like it's absolutely panned extreme right and left. There's no, mm. you can hear a little bleed maybe mm -hmm. from some of the vocals. And but, that's right, because when you used to play those albums in mono, yeah. maybe you'd get a little pair of rubbish speakers on holiday and plug them in. They were only mono. You could only hear one set of instruments. That's right, drive you mental. On old soul albums, that's very common yeah it was you just like hear a tambourine and a piano in one channel it's like karaoke you could d provide your own vocals sometimes absolutely um and uh penthouse and pavement obviously well that's their classic album and, and it's a track from that album i'm going to play you now 
Um, sometimes when this happens, when you reappraise and repurchase uh, a band's output on a different format years after you were first into them, you can be surprised at either how good they are or how b- bad they are <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and Heaven 17 are a very interesting blend of the two. Yeah. Mostly very, very good. But here's a track that illustrates that. It's called Play to Win. It's from Penthouse and Pavement. And this is illustrating they're good. Yeah, well, it's I'd say it's 70% brilliant and 30%. It gets into a sticky patch when it comes to the synth solo. The production is a little thin. On the production is thin, but that's in- intentionally so. But that this has a, they've chosen an interesting synth sound and they've really gone for it during the solo. It's very high in the mix. This is the one that sounds like they're rattling bones at the beginning. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. All sorts of stuff going on. Uh, the lead singer does a sort of um, shouty rap that's yeah. a bit ill-advised. So bear with it towards the, you know, the middle of the song, because it c- comes back again. This is Heaven 17 with Play to Win. There we go. That's uh, Heaven 17 with Play to Win. Um, and to create that vocal sound, uh, the lead singer of Heaven 17, Martin... No, it's Glenn Gregory. Gregory. Glenn Gregory actually uh, went, got sw- sucked into a television, like Did a he? little girl in Poltergeist, yeah. Play <laughs> yeah, to Win. That oh, bit. I see that bit, right. Mommy! Mommy! Do you remember that bit from Poltergeist? Of course. Um, that's brilliant, though. That sounded great. It did sound great, sounded didn't it? sounded 100% great. Yeah, I, that's I was wrong album. about the Bones. Uh, the Bones' is fascist groove thing. Right. It starts with the rattling yeah. bones, uh, which is also very good. They've got a compilation out, I think, um, Heaven 17, of all their best They're stuff. a great band. Uh, they, they got many compilations, but I think they just released one. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Heaven 17, that was Joe's Choice. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Uh, we've got a trail now. There's no indication of what the trail might be for here on the computer. It's Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious Trail. Is it? Oh, What's it for? It's the Mercury Awards. Mercury Awards. Amazing! Let's hear it! That's Hot Chip with Over and Over. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Coming up, the Song Wars results, and we'll introduce you to our exciting special mystery guest. But first, here's the news, read by Catherine Cracknell. What was that? Fountains of Wayne, that's a classic. It, was, it sounds a little bit like... Um, it's aggressive. Oasis sometimes, doesn't he? He does mm. that little uh, Liam Gallagher impression, the chainsaw thing in there. Fountains of Wayne with radiation vibe. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. And it's time, I think, to resolve uh, last week's Song Wars. Let's have the jingle. It's time for Song Wars. The war of the songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Now, yes, Song Wars. Last week's subject was Grazia magazine. One of the top-selling lady mags, uh, and we were tasked with writing a song using uh, text from the magazine. We weren't allowed to change the text at all, and I did one on the contents page, and Adam did one on a moving column about a lady who had been recently bereaved and was now newly looking for love. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we had an email from a lady called Hannah Marriott, who's the entertainment writer at Grazia. She says, Hi, Adam and Joe. A little birdie tells us that Grazia is the subject of this week's Song Wars, which is very exciting news <laughs> for us six music fans. I'm afraid I spent Saturday in a digital radio free zone, so I didn't catch the show this week. So, could you tell me, have you actually broadcast the song yet, or will you be singing it on Saturday? I can't wait to have a listen. Many thanks and all the best, Hannah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Um, <clears throat> do you think she's probably, when was this sent? The 1st of September, when was that? It was a few days ago, wasn't it, now? So she's probably, someone's probably played them to her? Well, uh, As long as she doesn't play the chit, the chit. Yeah, Some of yeah. it's a bit rude about Grazia. Mainly, mainly Adam. May have sounded as if it was me, but actually there was, a, <laughs> Adam had a weird thing in his throat that week and, uh... I was going to say, your, at the end, your song is absolutely fine because it's just the contents pages yeah. of Grazia. But then at the end, you deliver a damning <laughs> blow by calling the women that read it stupid or something. In the Silly. song. Silly. See, that's not an insult. Silly women are fun. They just appreciate <laughs> the fun aspects of life. Oh, you silly Billy. That sort of thing. No, I'm not saying they're stupid. I'm just saying they're really extra fun to have around. <laughs> Wasn't that, was that not clear? Well, I was worried about mine as well, because I, I, I wrestled with the taste um, implications of you mine. You did. And uh, I played it to my wife, and she wasn't impressed. No. Uh, well, she, she's a Grazia she reader. She loves Grazia. <laughs> and she said so... She's a silly woman. She is a little bit silly. You see, I don't mean that rudely. No. So? 
Um, you just, you're, it's the joie de vivre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wasn't impressed. She asked me what the hell I thought I was doing, and uh, she didn't think it was very funny. <laughs> so um, let's find out. <laughs> let's find out who won in the end. Shall I'd we? like you to secretly record your wife's admonishing. <laughs> One week and bring it was. In. It was quiet. There wasn't was much it? said. It wow, was just that's extra powerful. The the, the silence spoke. Now listen, I'm, I know I'm going to lose. I think I think um I think it's probably going to be about three ninety seven. I'm expecting. Before you read the results, yeah. one or two emails, uh, just to show you the spread of opinion on these songs. Mm -hmm. One from William Thomas, copywriter. Is that his uh, third name? I don't know. Probably he could just be a William rapper. Thomas. My vote for song was this week's goes to Adam for his Grazia tune, which was brilliantly tasteless and fun. Joe's was lacking. What happened, Joe? You need to find your mojo once again. Maybe you should try throwing a tantrum too. Ooh. He's right. That was a little double-edged stab there. <sighs> James Pittendre writes, Hi, Adam and Joe. Well, this week has been really tricky to decide. When you started Song Wars, they were quite amusing and simple little songs. You probably spent a few hours each on Garage Band. Now, you've both got these really well-polished songs that you must have spent ages on and have put a lot into. They have layers, nuances, and all that. Is he really SH1T. All that? Yeah. However, this could just be the absence of Song Wars talking, and actually, the songs are terrible. What does that mean? However, I'm voting Adam, as Joe seems to be stuck in a Bowie-esque rut. <gasps> well, that's Forward slash labyrinth. You led him down that critical avenue. <laughs> you were the one that said that's funny, isn't it? When you make suggestions about your own shortcomings and people pick up on them. It's a valuable that's lesson. true. Anyway, yeah, there, there's various, various All other right. emails. There's a spread of opinion, but basically, Adam's going to win, and I'm, f I'm fine with that. Are you, and you reckon you're not going to get creamed by that Yeah, much, yeah, I think though. it's going to be about 397. <gasps> it's... Ninety-one nine. There you go. To me, that's fine. That's all right. It's all right. You know, is the track at number one in the charts the best <laughs> track currently available? <laughs> no, it's the Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> it's the worst track currently available. <laughs> so, what do I learn from that? Okay, here's my winning song, uh, which is taken from uh, mag the magazine Grazia a couple of weeks ago, and it uh, it is verbatim the words from an article by Samantha Warwick that I found within the magazine. I have not added any other lyrics other than those that she wrote, and here it is. Nearly three years after Sam lost her husband in a climbing accident, she's falling in love again. But can she dare to let go of the past? We'd start to see each other nearly every day, but never talked of the future or uttered the L word. That would have been crazy, in fact, she was right. Rob O was only 27, I had more baggage than Terminal 5. Better to let it go now, so I ignored Rob O's texts when they came. It was cold to him on the phone, better to hurt now than later. I was too old, too damaged, he was so full of life. Eventually, after a week of the cold shoulder, he came looking for me. What's going on? He asked, his pale blue eyes looking hurt. It all spilled out. Rob's death, the age difference, my fear for the future, if we had a future. I like you a bit too much, I said. I'm scared. Do you think I'm going to let you go? He replied. And just like that, I knew I had to let go of the ghosts. There we go, Hannah. <laughs> I hope you, uh, I hope you uh, took that in the spirit in which it was created. A spirit of joy, a spirit of mischievousness, a spirit of fun, and uh, sp uh, it's like the magazine Spirito itself. Spirito di punto. Spirito di punto. Grazie, of course, does not mean thank you, as we thought, but grace. And um, I, I hoped that maybe that song encaptured, encaptured, encapsulated? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Okay. No. <laughs> Just, mm. So what are we going to do next time? What do you think about Timberland songs? That's an interesting idea. Yeah, you reckon? Well, we should, we should ask our listeners if they've got any other ideas for next time's Song Wars. 
You right there? You got a little, making a little noise. Got a little gremlin there, and you're. I was just uh, having a, 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 a clementine. Clementine. It was just settling in there. Might have. Sn- uh, there might be a little pixie in one of the segments. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, actually. The majority of fairies and pixies do die. Do they? Yeah, because they get trapped in fruit. People mistake them for pips, and they get in there and they melt in the gastric juices. Oh, what's going on? That's what, <laughs> that's what happens. That's Adam's new CGI feature he's working on. All right, then. Listen, uh, you love Lauren Laverne. Let's have a little trail with her voice in it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks. That's okay. That was uh, gossip there uh, with Are You That Somebody? That was um, the gossip in the hub. Were they in the hub? Yes. They were in the Six Music Hub. Amazing. Exciting. Amazing to think that... Uh, Beth Ditto was actually here with her cheeky personality, singing her lungs out, um, right about four feet away from where we are now. Extraordinary. That's an extraordinary thought, isn't it? I, I, you know who Steve Jones is, right, Joe? Yeah, he's the Welsh uh, T4 presenter. Exactly. Mm. He is an unstoppable presenting behemoth. It's true. The ladies love him. Yeah. Uh, and men love him. Kids love him. Animals love him. <laughs> Animals particularly <laughs> flock Nits to him. love him. <laughs> yeah, you reckon? Worms love him. <laughs> he is presenting some award thing. How do I know this? Because Juliet Lewis told me. Really? Yeah. When I was in Los Angeles, I went to Los Angeles <sighs> a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm a jet slag. And um, I went there and I stayed with Will Smith, the rapper, in his gold house. And... He, I met Juliet Lewis, right? She was the only celebrity that I actually spoke to during my trip. That's good. But she was nice. She's good. I, in fact, I was watching Natural Born Killers last night. Right. Really. Yeah. And she, Blu-ray. she is brilliant, yeah. though, isn't she? Good when she's on quality. form, she's hard to beat. Well, watching her in high definition, I, I was taken by her stomach. Ah. Uh-huh. Mm. What, a little wobbly? No, just sexy. Oh, sexy. Very, very sexy body. She is lovely. She's got the most adorable eyes as well. Really? Like eyes that you could With easily lovely eyes. fall With into. A beautiful pair of eyes. And that's not a euphemism. That's not the way my dad would use it. When, lovely eyes. When we were watching, uh, when we used to watch, um, what's it called? Buck Rogers in the 25th century. And uh, Aaron Gray. Aaron Gray would pop beautiful in. Beautiful eyes. My dad would say, look at her eyes. I said, Dad, you can't even see her eyes from dad, there. Dad, you mean buttocks buttocks <laughs> he wasn't talking about her buttocks anyway um juliet lewis generally <laughs> genuinely has lovely eyes in her head and she was um saying oh i'm going over to the uk quite soon i'm presenting an award ceremony with steve jones and uh i said really the guy from the sex pistols no the other guy and i forgot about the welsh genius so he's presenting award ceremonies with juliet lewis now i mean that's a st- it's either good for him or bad for her. It's hard to tell <laughs> which way to slice that. <laughs> which awards is it? I can't remember which ones it is. And she was sort of saying, is that going to be good? Is it going to be fun, do you think? I think it's the British School of Motoring Reversing <laughs> Awards for the best parallel parking. Maybe if Steve or Juliet uh, are listening, they could um, tell us, email in. What is the email address? It's the Helix Pencil Awards. <laughs> <laughs> it's adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. But that'll be fun. What are you asking for? <laughs> what awards they're yeah, presenting? Yeah, wh- which awards are they presenting? Right. I mean... It w- I, would ima- I imagine it would be a fairly bizarre affair, wouldn't you? Because Juliet Lewis is an unpredictable I think this commodity. whole story has just been a sort of Trojan horse for you to let us know that you chatted to um, Juliet Lewis. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Well, you, well, I can't believe you made that explicit. <laughs> Why would you make it all explicit like that? Um, anyway, so Juliet Lewis likes this song as well, uh, she was telling me when I was talking to her. Um, and I think I'll I- tell you what else, she's very sexy in Strange Days. It's a strange, confusing film. Do you remember that film with Rafe Fiennes? Of course I remember. It's burned into oh, my noggin. When she does the dance. Bigelow. That's one of Bigelow's disastrous yeah. efforts, isn't it? Uh, it's, got, it's quite exciting. It's horrible, that film. It's millenniumistic. Squids, is that what they've got? Uh, what, Something the like memory that? things? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, I'll tell you what she's brilliant in. One of, the, one of the many things she's very good in is the Woody Allen one. Which Woody Allen film is she in? Uh, it's either Husbands and Wives or... Uh, I think it, maybe it's husbands and wives, and she's extraordinarily good as a really? as a precocious. Really? I bet you told her that. Uh, I didn't actually. Didn't you? No, she wandered away from me. Did she? Yes, yeah, she left about three minutes after. 
<laughs> started talking to her. You're no um, Steve Jones, mate. I'm certainly not. Anyway, I think I play this almost every September if I'm on the radio, and probably so do many other DJs. But it is a very good song. Earth, Wind and Fire. Check it out. That is like a solid infusion of pure joy, though, isn't it? They're very, a very good band, yeah. Oh, you cannot beat that. I mean, that's a timeless slice of genius pie. There, can I confess to liking a Phil Collins album? Go on, then. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of Phil. There's one Phil Collins album. Is it Hello, I Must Be Going? That, that's got the Earth, Wind & Fire horns on it. Oh, yeah. And there's a couple of tracks that are just amazing. He's due for reassessment, surely, Collins. I might play some Collins. Yeah. Yeah, next week, maybe. Do you like, um, Mama? That's... No. It, Mama's Genesis, though, isn't it? Mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not Collins. Is that, is that even Gabriel Solo? No, <laughs> no, that's Collins. He's got Collins has got his stuff all over it. Over that one. Oh please, will you tell me, Mama? <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird that song. We should play it at some point, surely, because that's. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna play a good, some good Collins with some Earth, Wind, and Fire horns on. I'm them gonna next play week. some bad Collins. You bring in some good colours. Okay. I'll, I'll bring in Mama. <laughs> well, good is all, all in the ears of the listener. Hey, listen, listeners, thank you for all your responses to my cat problems. Yeah. It's brilliant having a radio show for things like this. Right. Because I'm being inundated with good advice. One of the most alarming things uh, is here f has come in from... Ba -ba -ba, uh, Renat. What? Yeah, she's saying that apparently the cataracts in its eyes might be as a result of malnutrition. Oh. So it's it's already very ill. I'm going to take it to the vet. As yeah. soon as I leave the show, I'm going to take it to the vet. Take it to the vet! And I'm going to get it looked at and taken care That's of. That's what James Brown would have advised. I promise, little kitten, I promise I'll help you. Take it to the vet! You're, you're so callous. <laughs> you laugh in the face of illness and death in tiny, helpless I'm just creatures. Saying, that's what Dr. James Brown You're still would doing your jester act dig it while down creatures to the vet. are dying. You should dig it to the vet. While the animals of the big British castle die of a mysterious <laughs> disease. <laughs> All glib. the mothers and children are, are frightened that the court jester is still dancing around, <laughs> stamping on kittens obliviously <laughs> while he peddles his latest hopeless routine. <laughs> based on material from the 60s. Dig it to the vet! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so listen, in the, in the next hour, there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, it's all piling up. The nation's favourite feature, Text the Nation. And also, I think uh, we should meet our special guest very soon, don't you? Special guest. Special guest. Um, but first, here is the Top of Our Sweeper and Sex on Fire by Kings of Leon. Not necessarily in that order. Check it out. Uh, every day should be a holiday, say the dandy Warhols. One can admire the sentiment. But what a stupid <laughs> idea in practical terms, especially during these times of credit crunch. Yeah. Credit crunch, credit crunch, credit crunch. Mmm, delicious. I have a competition in my house, uh, who, you know, how long it takes one to hear the word credit crunch. Mm. Every day. Right. It's usually ten minutes before <laughs> someone on either the radio or the telly says credit crunch. Yeah. <clears throat> or sometimes someone you know, the postman, morning, credit crunch! <laughs> <laughs> they should, I mean, we've talked about this before, but has no one tried to bring out any credit crunch related products? Uh, well, you would have thought a chocolate bar manufacturer, exactly. say crunchy. Yeah. If they brought out a credit crunchy, and it was would sell, and it, it was slightly cheaper. And you know they could advertise it by having different lengths, and they yeah. could, they could display them like a bar chart. <laughs> what are you laughing like? Your joke. For? It's not a joke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. It's a serious idea. So what are you saying? They'd have a like a graph. They would sell different t lengths of the crunchies. Credit crunch. Well, depending on what. I don't know. I hadn't thought that bit through, but they, I, I was thinking that you would advertise. I like the idea them. of an advert, which is like a bar chart, but, exactly, uh, and it would go down. Yeah. That's yeah, but, but that would be brilliant because yeah. even though the economy is going down, the chocolate bar is getting to more and more delicious. Exactly. And you're eating more of it. That's <laughs> a good idea. That is a good idea. Um, anyway, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I think it's time for the nation's favourite feature jingle, <gasps> don't you? Oh, oh dear. Yeah. This isn't very good. Someone's yeah. getting fired. Right, we did bye bye. Discuss we, we were ready about five minutes oh, ago. About five years ago. Oh, oh, dear oh, me. Oh, dear. Oh. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Claire, our producer, thinks it's funny. I thinks we're just having a little laugh over that, over that mistake. She's, she's crying. Oh, she is crying now. I what? had to go to the toilet. Look, I had to everyone has to go to the toilet. 
That's, anyway, um, <laughs> wear nappies. Fair enough, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> you should wear nappies, though, seriously. Um, now, text the nation this week. This is the nation's uh, favourite feature, and uh, basically it means that we ask you to write for us about half an hour of the show. Yeah. Maybe a bit more, depending on the quality of the stuff you write in, uh, which is usually very high, so we're always happy. Uh, this week we are thinking about BBC Three. It's, um, if this is the nation's favourite feature, then BBC Three is the nation's favourite TV channel. Mm. I think everyone agrees that... that follows. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone agrees that uh, BBC Three are the unparalleled purveyors of high-quality drama uh, and comedy entertainment. F uh, youth orientated For young people, yes. Yeah. For, for ages exactly 16 to 24. They are the BBC's youth channel. That's right. So they, uh, in their programming, represent everything we want our young people to be, mm -hmm. the values we want them to aspire to, uh, the sort of fun we want them to have. Yeah. Um, the BBC takes that job very seriously. The programmes are made by people aged 16 to 24 all, all of them <laughs> and they feature people aged between 16 and 24 lo behold if you're 25 you get you it. can sort off to bbc4 yeah but if you uh, they shoot you in the foot and then you have to mm. limp off to uh, bbc4 where no one will watch you that's the way it goes it seems harsh but that's life in the big british castle uh here are some shows on. So the idea, basically, yeah. I mean, maybe we should just tell them the idea, is to come up with some new ideas for shows for BBC Three. Uh -huh. New ideas for youth TV programming. Now, the BBC Three, uh, the BBC Three already has a very impressive roster of uh, shows brilliantly formulated to satisfy the needs of young people, such as... Blood, Sweat and T-Shirts. <coughs> Six young fashion addicts swap shopping on the high street with work. With working in India's cotton fields and right, clothes that, it's a good one actually. Yeah, exposing what happens behind the scenes in sweatshops. Choose a less good one. Can fat teens hunt? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Ten dangerously overweight <laughs> teenagers embark on a perilous journey that could save their lives. That's good. Here's a new drama. I don't know. I haven't watched this one, but uh, I've seen the trails. It looks very exciting. Mouth to mouth. I, I said that in a silly way, I don't know why. Mm. I was trying to make it sound more exciting, but it came out sarcastic, and I apologise for that. A new comedy drama following the lives of a, uh, the life of a girl band, uh, which will run on mobile phones. This is not the girl band, but the, the drama itself. Mm. This will be available to people on mobile phones, social networks, and the show's own BBC website before transmitting on BBC Three. So that's ideal because they're tapping its cross-platform, you know. You well, wouldn't... we're already establishing some tropes, if, if I can use the word tropes. Love the word tropes. Sex is, is an important component, mm. wouldn't you say? Yeah. Pop music is an important component, having a pop star or it being about a band or something mm -hmm. uh interactivity a, sorry to interrupt very is key. important very important mobile phone just the word mobile phone mobile phones somewhere in there uh, the drama mouth to mouth follows the highs and lows of three members of a girl group cat's eyes through individual monologues mm. so that should be uh, like a, a, a program um here's another one snog marry avoid snog marry avoid jenny frost presents the world's first make under show huh. which sees pod the personal overhaul device, transform OTT girls and boys into natural beauties. So there's a lot of acronyms there. The POD, well, it's two. POD and OTT. Uh, uh, there's, uh, here's another smattering of shows. Obviously, Dog Borstal, that's been on for a while. Worst behaved dogs in Britain come face to face with three tough young trainers or just tough trainers, Natalie Cassidy's Diet Secrets. Mm, what are they? Uh, it doesn't tell you, obviously. Uh, it doesn't give away the secrets, otherwise you wouldn't watch the show. Um, oh. Actress Natalie Cassidy, best known for portraying podgy teenager Sonia in EastEnders. This is from the BBC's website. Lifts the lid on her secret past of fad dieting and investigates where these so-called celebrity diets come from. Who's doing them? And whether any of them actually work, she meets 20-year-old Vicky, who's been trying these fad diets since the age of 12. And together they try to examine, uh, and together they try the extreme maple syrup diet, which reduces calorie intake to just over 300 what? per day. It's uh, fascinating stuff. You That's just eat maple syrup? 
Uh, it seems insane, but uh, there you go. That's one of Natalie Cassidy's diet secrets. So there you go. There's there, there's a few of the shows that currently exist mm. on BBC Three. Also, of course, you've got comedy shows like Scallywagger, The Wrong Door, which just started their CD, CG sketch. They're all pretty show. high concept. Yeah. Uh, Titty Bang Bang, of course, that's been one of their big hits over the last few years. And the store, the, the, the mortar that holds the bricks of BBC Three together, two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. It's a very broad remit here for, for our texters, but, uh, but we're, we're asking for new shows that might be commissioned by BBC Three, so they've got to really tick those BBC Three boxes. They've got to have a celebrity, something to do with sex or maybe street life or yeah. mobile phones or dieting or now snogging. I've, I've already been down this route, of course, uh, you know, because I tried to get a, a show mm. commissioned without success by BBC Three. Did it have celebrities in it? No. Did it have dieting? No. Dangerous dogs? No. Mobile phones? No. Uh, actually, it had a little bit of a mobile phone. It did, didn't it? It, it was to do with YouTube. That's very contemporary. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Sex in it? Did it have sex in Not it? Not really. Uh, swearing. There was some swearing. A little bit of swearing, oh, I'm yeah. I'm surprised you didn't get commissioned. I know. I did my best. So this might sound a, a little bitter, this whole feature. Um, and that's not the case. Obviously, I've come to terms with the whole thing. Um, but I would certainly love to hear your ideas, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have a go at thinking of a couple ourselves that will give you more of an idea yeah. during the next record. Exactly. Now, here is Adele with Many Shades of Black. Adele and the Raconteurs with Many Shades of Black. That's not an official release. It's a cover of the Raconteurs track Many Shades of Black featuring Adele on vocals. So what I'm are reading you from a piece of paper. Right. Adele is nominated for a Mercury Music Prize for her Nonsense. debut album, 19. What, so what, how come it's not an official release? What's the deal there? I don't know. Maybe it's a special exclusive Six Music track. Ooh. But listen, listeners, this is uh, Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. You might remember that recently we ran a competition called Video Wars. It was a sort of a spin-off from Song Wars. We asked uh, listeners to make videos to two Song Wars tracks, Meatballs or Jane's Brain. And we had an amazing uh, quantity of high-quality entries. And the prize was to come into the studio and watch the show being made. Like visiting the Wizard of Oz in some, well, in terms of it being really disappointing. <laughs> when you finally get there. And we're very happy to have the winner of Song Wars in the studio right now, Mr. Chris Salt. Hello, Chris. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Chris, um, I'm going to call you, I I'm going to give you some options for things I want to call you. Well, I'd like to call him Salty. I was I mean, going to call I him I'd Salty. that was the top of the, you know, that was the plan, that the route A... Nickname. Yeah, how do you feel about Salty? It's one I've heard before. Can I call you a, a Salt on Precinct 13? <laughs> I would prefer that, actually. Can I call you Saltine? Mm. No. Uh, what about Sea Salt? That's a popular one, too. Is it? Yes. What do people call you at work? Chris. Man. Chris! I hadn't <laughs> thought of that one. Can I call you Ready Salted Crisps? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard that. Come on, come that's on, genius. Come on, come on. That. That's, uh, that's a new one. Okay, uh, the Salt Man? I've not heard Salt Man. Assault with a Deadly Chris? He's not heard Salt Man. He hasn't heard Assault with a Deadly Chris. The Salt Man. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being six again, isn't it? <laughs> salt with. Uh, when June rolls around, do people call you Somersault? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. No. Well, they're going to now. I look forward to it. Was that your little pixie in there, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Mandarin pixie. <laughs> Um, okay, Chris, that part of the show is over now. Uh, you can relax. <laughs> <laughs> go, go home. You may now go home. You may now leave. So uh, listen, congratulations on your video. It was really, really good. And if there's anyone out there who hasn't checked it, you could go on the BBC Six Music website and, and look at Chris's video. It's extraordinarily good. It's all done with Lego. It really is. And, and, and you're a bit of a Lego film expert, right? You have a kind of hobbyist studio at home and make yeah, lots of yeah. these amazing little um, Lego men films. I've made a few, yeah. Yeah. Are you, um, may I ask about your personal situation? <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? Do you have children? I have a long-time cohabiting lady partner. Mm -hmm. Ah. Who prefers not to be called a girlfriend. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, um, we've been together for 12 years. Yeah, and she works, presumably, does she go into the office... Yes. Or, uh, uh, right, and leaving you to basically stay at home, or do you With go into the office mess. as well? I go to the office as well. I, right. I work nine to five. So when you get back, uh, you ignore your uh, long-time cohabiting lady partner, and you head straight for the Lego studio. Correct, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I spend the whole night there. Because that must have taken a while. How long did it take you to make the video for S Video Wars? 
It was about three days. Right. I actually had a couple of days off work, so it was just me in the house on my own. And this is you literally on your own, moving all the little figures, doing stop motion and stuff, or is she, is your lady partner helping you every now and again? Um, it's just me. Right. It's, there's not really room in there for more than one person. I mean, that's, we used to do a lot of, um, animated stuff yeah, ourselves, obviously, uh, with Star Wars figures and toys, and it is, I mean, it's one of the nicest ways to spend your time, is it not? It's... Yeah, it's fun. Like for a man, for a <laughs> it's very <laughs> immersive, isn't it? It's wonderful. You really lose track of time and space. You yeah. get in a, li a little stop motion bubble. Yeah, get completely absorbed in it until something catches fire, <laughs> or you realize or you cut your finger or, right. so, or something yeah. hideous. You drop some uh, hot melt glue on your hand. That's what used to happen to us with the glue gun. But you haven't got that problem with Lego, have you? No. My the only problem I have is I'll get up in the morning, mm -hmm. start filming. I'll stop filming and look outside and it's dark right and you know i've kind of missed a day <laughs> <laughs> you look like less of a hobbit than i imagined <laughs> i i actually imagined a kind of cave dwelling person to come in with deep dark rings yeah. under their eyes and stuff and a, a pallid complexion and you you look like a normal pretty healthy happy sort of a person i was surprised um, i'm surprised that you think <laughs> <laughs> now chris uh salty the salt the salt man assault on, assault on, on a deadly crisp um, have you had amazing feedback since winning this competition? I'd imagine the phone has uh, has not stopped ringing. Is that right? <laughs> it's <laughs> not started ringing. Hasn't started so ringing. So close, yeah. There may be a technical problem. What about the guys at work? Did they see it? <laughs> a few people at work have seen it, yeah. Uh, um, you're a uh, programmer, is that right? Correct, yes. Uh, so you write software? Yes. Yeah, what kind of software? The really interesting kind. Uh, financial stuff, uh, mortgages, um, ISAs. Credit crunch like software? Credit crunch software. Yes. Have you so, had to uh, write some new credit crunch uh, programs? Well, what we've had to do is take some of the numbers out, right? So that it'll only go up to kind of five hundred. Move like the decimal times. point yeah. on all the programs. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, Chris, excitingly, we have got. You may have thought that this was the extent of your prize was coming in here today. You'd be wrong because oh we have brought you gifts, actual gifts. We're going to give you those gifts after this next record, right? Yes. Just to spread this out a bit. So uh, hang on in there, Chris, and, and you might be, um, you know, marvelling at how some of this works. You might be scared, a bit confused, frightened, but you're definitely impressed, right? I'm very impressed. Yeah, Especially it's been awesome. Especially the beefeaters out the door. The beefy, we do have beefeaters. Yeah. All the trimmings of the Big British Castle have been here for Chris to inspect. But here's a free play. This is from, um, we still don't know how to say his name, Eros, 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 Eros Child's uh, ex gorky psychotic monkey, now a brilliant solo artist. This is his new album. It's called Cheer Gone. It's out on the 10th, no, the 13th of January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. I have to count through the months. <laughs> you didn't know what number 10 was. No. Yeah. <laughs> and this is called My Love Is Gone. That's Euros Childs there with My Love Is Gone. That was chosen for you listeners by Joe Cornish. Yes, from his forthcoming album, The Miracle Inn. It's quite a downbeat no, album. No, Cheer, no, gone. Cheer, gone. Sorry, Cheer gone. gone. Sorry. The album was Cheer Gone. The Miracle Inn was his previous album. Uh, yeah, quite a downbeat album. Uh, hence Cheer Gone, I suppose. Mm, but still beautiful singing. Yeah. On it. That was a lovely track. So we've got Chris Salt, the winner of the Video Wars competition, live in the studio. Chris, it must be incredible to visit the BBC. It's like a dream come true. Isn't it just? Have you been here before to uh, our studios just off Great Portland Street? I haven't. Uh, you know, one of the fun things about doing this show, because uh, obviously we slightly cross over with Jonathan Ross on Radio 2, is that when we finish... Uh, we go downstairs and we sometimes see some of Jonathan's amazing celebrity guests filing in. And also, we are met by the throngs of paparazzo. I uh, saw them on the way in, actually. Yeah. yeah. And special people with their um, uh, um, autograph, autograph books. And there's always a tiny little moment, I don't know about Joe, but uh, for me, there's always a tiny little moment where I think, maybe this will be the week where they ask for my autograph. And so far, that week has not arrived. Chris, did you have, like, a visual image of what it would be like before you came here? Had you pictured it in your head? I pictured the the main, if you like, the radio uh, building. Right, and what, what was that picture like? Describe it as house. you thought it, was, it would yeah, be. Broadcasting house, and yeah. then it turns out that Six Music is actually a little way down the road. So, immediate disappointment. Around the yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's had you pictured what the uh, what the studio might be like? You know what it what it might be like in here. The amazing magical goings on, maybe. Um, it, 
nothing could live up to <laughs> to the reality. Here's a special treat for you, Chris. I'm going to get you, as if you're a six-year-old boy, to throw <laughs> to the news for us now. So in your best, he uh, doesn't know voice, who's reading it though. Uh, it doesn't matter. Catherine Cracknell. It doesn't Catherine matter. Catherine and Elizabeth. Catherine and Elizabeth. Hi, Chris. I want you to. I'm say... writing it down for him. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you just say now it's time for the news read by those people. Are you ready, Chris? Uh -huh. <laughs> And now it's time for the news, read by Catherine and Elizabeth. Bread on digital Bread radio and online. BBC Six Music. Yes, that's the Black Kids with "Look at Me When I Rock with You." Uh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and we are going to check in now on the nation's favourite feature, Jingle. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. And Text the Nation this week, listeners, is all about new shows for BBC Three, the nation's most thrusting, forward thinking channel for 16 to what? 24 year olds. Yes. Uh, and they need, God knows they need new ideas. Well, you, well, God knows they don't need any new ideas. No, they've got. Because they've got so many good ones already. But just in case out of their they armpits. did. Uh, that's what we're asking you to do. And I of thought course of an they idea. must be very carefully targeted to the 16 to 24 year old demographic whose obsessions we're all aware of. Killing, exactly. drugs, sex and swearing. And cakes. And cakes. Uh, here's, do you want to hear my idea? Please, yes. Your Filthy Groin. Like it. Is the name of the show. Dr. Amanda Janine mm. travels the UK. Do you know Amanda Janine? Uh, no. She's beautiful. Is she real? No. Uh, Dr. Amanda Janine travels the UK, meeting the teens with the worst conditions between their legs. Oh, dear, that's a shame, isn't it, about that one? You don't like it? It just sounds horrible, but... Well, exactly. It's getting a commission. Come What's on. What's it called again? Your filthy groin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how clean is your house except, uh, for another area. Yeah. I think people would like it, you know? And um, plus, you, you imagine... All the stuff <laughs> that you would see. Uh, let's have some ideas from the listeners. Why okay, not? then. Here are some ideas from the listeners. This comes from Chris Kirk Kerman. He says uh, he's pitching a show, and Adam, I'd like you to be the BBC Three commissioner. Okay. May maybe Chris as well. You could be a BBC commissioner as well. Okay. And th these, this is the idea I'm pitching you. It comes from Chris Kerman's production company. It's called Will Smith or Won't Smith, a light-hearted series where kids' favourite Will Smith... Uh -huh. Yeah, Adam's friend. Visits blacksmiths in rural England and is later judged on his blacksmithery. A new slant on the generation game theme. Uh, what do you think? Will Smith, I mean, Will Smith is good. Kids love Will Smith. And, and we're sure it's the uh, rapper rather than the comedian he's talking about. Uh, he must be talking about the rapper, surely. Uh, well, yep, yep, yep. Quickly, any... any, uh, any no, any, I'm not commissioning no. that. It doesn't sound in any way to do with nipples. Chris Salt, any commission on that one? I think if he was using the smithy to make knives, then it might be a fly. Very good point. Or, to sharpen implements, yeah. Or gats. If it was a gat factory, <laughs> yeah. then that would be That's different. Okay, well, we'll go back to them with that note okay. and see if they can re-pitch. If it was a gat factory. Uh, Dan Winter in Newcastle says, Last of the Summer Wine, Code 2.0. An update of the old programme, but with sex, drugs, bass and hollyoaks. Beauty. Hollyoaks Esquire Beauty. Esqui be oh, Hollyoaks Esque Beauty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Got yeah, that yeah, yeah. Um, 2.0, I like that. I like the idea of naming sequels like they do movies, you yeah. know, with as if they're a reissue of, of software. Right. You know that's good, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, okay, let's move on. That's not being commissioned, is it? You don't like that? I'm not going to commission What if you just get the BBC Three CGI team to do a pass on old, uh, old Last of the Summer Wine episodes? Well, they did that Put in Time some... Trumpet. Did they? Yeah, they turned them into robots. <laughs> it's not as good as your filthy groin. It's not, is it? <laughs> what is the, we might, that might be a, an ongoing problem. One more. This is from David Bradbury. He says, Be new BBC Three idea, knife swap. <laughs> Two teens from different areas of the country, different social, social stratas, etc., swap their street tool of choice for two weeks. Perhaps they have to roll with each other's gang and try to introduce their own rules, stroke, funny handshake, etc. <laughs> Christmas special of celebrity knife swap. It then just says at the end. 
doesn't have any ideas for what it is. <laughs> it just says it. That's good. Come on. Just some holly around the knives. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? Uh, I think it is good because oh, it's... Oh, I was trying to stab you with a gun, mate. Sorry. <laughs> Another <laughs> comic <laughs> moments. <laughs> From knives. <one. laughs> Jabbing someone with a pistol. Julie is very unhappy <laughs> with Mandy's knife. It's just not the kind of knife I'd normally use. I'd go, I'd go for a carving knife. She uses this little peeling thing. I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> they don't really talk like that children these days, do they? It's all children. Um, well, I like it because it's dealing with a very serious subject uh, that's current and topical, but it's doing it in a grotesquely flippant way. Um, so I'm going to commission that one. One more quick, Chris. Are you commissioning that knife swap for the title yeah, alone, it's surely? A, it's a format we know and love. Yeah, absolutely. It's in there. Finally... Uh, Mike from Nottingham suggests a series called Belt Up. Mm -hmm. Young people are taken by someone off Emmerdale to experience life for a week with their trousers pulled up properly. <laughs> <laughs> they just get their trousers yanked up. <laughs> Belt Up. Yeah, I like that. Simon Cowell, that would be the more obvious presenting choice for that. Absolutely. He's got famously high trousers. He could be a celebrity judge. He does. He looks... Uh, this is probably not a new observation, but he does look as if... He's just wandering around with um, straps coming in, like, like, like he's on a harness. <laughs> yes. And they've just painted the harness out. Yeah, like a clown whose braces have got caught in a, in a <laughs> ceiling fan. <laughs> that should be on his business card. I think it is. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for those ideas. We'll listeners. read some more out. Keep them coming in. Keep them coming in. Hey, can I remind listeners of the text and email? Text yeah. is 64046. That's 64046. Email is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. <laughs> Simon Cow, like a clown, <laughs> whose braces have been caught in a ceiling fan. Um, that should be underneath the uh, listings whenever he's in a show as well. Uh, OK, now, I think after this, maybe we should give Chris some presents, or do you think we should do that later in the show? I think give Chris the presents. Yeah, OK, we'll do yeah. that after this. Now, this is a free choice. Do you like Kevin Ayers, uh, Chris? He's my favourite thing in the world. <laughs> nice one. You're learning fast. <laughs> Seriously, what kind of music do you enjoy listening to? While you're doing I, your Lego stuff. Uh, generally kind of listen to the sort of noisy things that other people don't like. Uh, do you, you know what's good for little repetitive tasks like stop motion is a bit of square pusher, that kind of thing. Yeah, do I you, like square pusher. There you go. You love the drill and bass. Well, this couldn't be further from that. Uh, it's a bit of old 70s noodly prog style enjoyment. Uh, from Kevin Ayres, this is called Shouting in a Bucket Blues. Kevin Ayres... With Shouting in a Bucket Blues. Oh, I love that song. And, um, yeah, that's why I, I chose it for you, listeners. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I thought it was all right. Uh, really? Didn't have enough rapping in it for me. Oh. Or bassy beats. Yeah, but uh, it was a good little guitar solo at it the was. end there. That was very nice. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, now, we are here with Chris Salt, Salty, the Salt Man, Sea Salt, Summer Salt. Salt on Precinct 13, <laughs> ready salted crisps. <laughs> Summer Salt. Yeah. Summer Salt, all, all, the, all the name nicknames we've got going for him there. And we're going to give him some gifts because the prize for this competition, and he did do an amazing bit of work. I mean, it must have taken you a while and you really put your blood, sweat and tears into it. So we need to try and match that with the level of uh, gifts. The BBC being a... Uh, a, a state-funded company can't really... Is it a company even? I don't think it is a company. It's just a sort of corporation. There you go. It can't be doing with things like prizes. It just doesn't suit the economy. So these are all personal gestures from Adam and I. I, I just grabbed some stuff on my way out. It looks like Adam might have put a bit more thought into mm, his gifts. Not really. Not really. No, I did put, so I we're did gonna put take thought it in, into it. Let's give him some, first of all, some proper Adam and Joe-related uh, gifts. Uh, Adam and Joe-related booty, first of all. I don't know if you already own this. The Adam and Joe DVD. I do already own it, but not with scribbles. Not with scribbles on it, and not with the original TX cards from the wow. first four series, Ooh. plus an invitation to our book launch, uh, which was about ten years ago. <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, so if time travel's invented, you can't go to that one. They'll be worth a lot. So very rare item. Invitation to our Oscars 2000 party, which we never had in the end, because no. we just couldn't be bothered. I think we just got, uh, like many things in our career, we almost got there, 
but then we just got tired and <laughs> decided to Went stay home. at home. Um, so so that, that's go. exciting. What else has, has he got there? He's got a copy of the Adam and Joe Song Wars album, Volume 1. Now, which is only available uh, digitally. But, that's right. But look, that's a, there's a CD copy. I printed Please. you out a special inlay there, Chris, and this is a promo copy. Look, it's all... You've got a mm. CD there with our stupid faces Pictures. on, and we've written on it for you there. Thank you. It's exciting. Have you downloaded this album already? I have downloaded the album already. Good nice man. one. I paid for it I'm as well. I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm absolutely amazed. But there you go. There's a there's a, a hard copy, a physical copy for you. Here's a rare item. This is my DVD commentary for the Priory. Oh, excellent. Done as uh, Ken Corner talking about the amazing <laughs> program, the Priory. Um, are, are you into just freestyle games? Yes. Yes. Okay, do you want well, to do one? Here's a um, a special gift. This is the uh, the very rare Ad Adam and Joe book. <laughs> it's exciting. It's worth how much on eBay? Seventy five quid at the I've last. I've only got three copies left. Now I've only got two left. That I'm sorry amazing. if the spine's a bit broken. Adam and Joe book published in when? Nineteen ninety nine. Something like that. Ninety eight. Very rare, but very funny. That was after series three we <laughs> did that one. Yeah, because I saw the uh, the mighty Boucher on Jonathan Ross last night talking about their new book coming out and. And how they were influenced by the Monty Python books. And I remember us saying something very similar. And our book is much better than the Mighty Bush's, Bush's book is going to be. Um, but, now, Chris, uh, if I were to ask you what your favourite movie was that you didn't, um, that you didn't have, uh, that you've been unable to get hold of. If there's one movie that you've, you've really been unable to get hold of. <laughs> oh, I'd have, to, I'd have to think about it because... Yeah, what um, would it be? It would probably be The Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> with Tim Allen. <laughs> that one, yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, I've been after that for so guess long. What, yeah. Guess what Joe's got. <gasps> <laughs> a copy That's of Tim amazing. Allen's the, the Santa Claus <laughs> on DVD. Oh. And it's not clause C-L-A-W-S. It's U-S-E as in it's, a legal it's clause. It's not a legal clause, yeah. Exactly. Oh. And if you have a look in there, it's the actual disc. Good. <laughs> <laughs> now that's, that's, for, you. that's, my that's life. for you, Chris. That's a digital versatile disc. That is. Yeah. Have yeah, you got a DVD player yet? Uh, we got one just recently. Yes. Did you? Yes. Brilliant. Well, that's that's uh, an hour and a half of, of fun for you now. There. What's your favourite recent DVD release? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, recent ones, I would have to say, it's probably Fool's Gold. <laughs> Yes, starring Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey. Yes. Uh, now, Joe was talking about this film the other week. He played, <laughs> he played a few clips of Ray, of Ray Winston doing his American accent. And I actually got suckered into going out and buying it, because he Joe made it sound quite good and romantic, and like there was nice locations and stuff, and he said right. my wife would like it. So I bought it with my money and watched it, and it's brilliant. So, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you the, the gift. Minute, turn Thank around. you. Very much. Oh, now, Chris, fi fi finally, is, is there a double bill <laughs> that you really, really wish you could get your hands on? If I, if there was a double bill, it would have to be the two Gs. Yeah. The Golden Compass, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. The, it's, the, it's a good film. But also, Goal, the Impossible, <laughs> the impossible Dream. <laughs> dream. <laughs> well, there you go. Look at that. The double bill. Uh, a genuine Golden Compass uh, DVD and a DVD of the film Goal. Uh, what a great G, letter G based double bill that will be. I'm a huge football fan as well. So I can tell. So am I. So there you go. Also, Chris, from my shelves, for some reason, still. Some of these might have pornography in them. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, still in the foil wrapping. Uh, one foot in the grave. <laughs> in the. Uh, uh, one foot in the uh, grave, series four. There you go. I imagine you've got a spare copy just in case your yeah, copy yeah. got broken. I thought uh, you might like. Some fake dynamite, <laughs> some plastic dynamite. That's, that's for you, you that's as well. Thing, every time I go past the shop, I think I need fake dynamite. Take uh, the price off there. Johnny Vegas, 18 stone of idiot, unseen and uncut. I don't even know what I was doing on my shelf. But there it is. Now it's going to some be Some badges. Yours. Incredible. Yeah, those are quite good. Those are good. Now, here's, here's an actual good present for you, Chris, because I bought an extra copy of this by mistake. But uh, have you seen this film? I haven't. I do quite like SpongeBob. SpongeBob SquarePants the movie. Now, oh, that's a good film. That is an absolute smash. So that is a good present for you there. <laughs> uh, here is another... Uh, My turn. Uh, AM, FM, <laughs> floating duck radio. That's a rubber duck with a radio in it, so you can listen to the radio in the bath. Why did you have that? You're not going to digital so I can listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it. That wasn't a present from a human being, was it? <laughs> what? What do you think it was a present from a duck? No, I thought a maybe robot. you picked it up like it was a freebie or something. No, no. 
Someone gave that to you and now you're giving it away. That is yeah, a little to cold, isn't it? Do you want it? Are you jealous? Oh, yeah, a little bit. You gave me that brilliant radio that I use in the bathroom. Right, right. That's a good question. That's Chris's. Uh, and finally, uh, there's a little self-promotional gift. Here's some videos from Bug, the pop video uh, show that I do at the BFI. Book now, listeners, if you'd like to come to <laughs> Bug number nine. It's just a plug-a-thon. <laughs> um, uh, so, yes, you'll enjoy that, Chris. I certainly will. Have you got any more gifts for Chris, or is that it? Uh, that's it for the moment. We should have your free play before yeah. listeners get really jealous and angry and, and switch off just no, we, out, of, out of jealousy. We just had my free play, but how, how about a little bit of... Uh, uh, trail action featuring the wonderful Guy Garvey. Top of hour. Well, you just did the tea thing. Am I this that tea, tea for top of hour or tea for trail or what's going on here? Uh, okay, top of hour sweeper and then trail or then sparks. Then sparks. Then sparks. Here we go. This is the voice of the big British castle. It is the top of the hour. Oh, that's wonderful. I got so bored with the last hour and glad it's gone. It's exciting and it's new. How do you do? Lady Hawk with Dusk Till Dawn. Uh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. And we've got our special guest, Chris Salt, uh, the winner of our Video Wars competition here. And, of course, the prize for winning was, was to be with us uh, here on the show live and watch how all the magic ebbs away. Uh, <laughs> we were going to, we made promises <clears throat> about touching our guest inappropriately as well. Do you remember those promises, Chris? I do remember those promises. How does me talking about those promises make you feel <laughs> right now? <laughs> Slightly I'm, flushed. Mm. Flushed, excited, scared. Flushed in a good way, I think. Really? Yes. Whereabouts would you like to be touched? In the studio. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's <laughs> a bit adventurous, isn't it? A uh, oh man, I'm not going to touch you. <laughs> going now. straight for the studio, is he? <laughs> no. Have you kept your studio clean? No, oh, stop it. Stop um, it. Um, we don't want to alter the setting on any of your knobs either. <laughs> no. Oh dear. Speaking of which, um, have we got any more ideas for Text the Nation, or are we not going to do that? Just we yet? do. Yeah, plenty more. Do you want to hear some more? Yeah, go on. Text the Nation this week, listeners, is all about new ideas for. Um, TV shows on BBC Three, the, U the BBC's youth channel, which has been very successful in coming up with arresting ideas that young people just love to watch. Mm. <clears throat> so here's an idea that's come in from Barry in Walthamstow, <laughs> <laughs> and it's called Get Off Your Facebook. Yeah. Youngsters compete to see how quickly they can lose all their Facebook friends by indulging debauched and hedonistic activities such as, well, you could get the, get the idea, fights and drugs and drowning visually impaired kittens, uh, <laughs> whilst publishing photos and messages on their Facebook account. Why would they lose their friends like that? Lose because... their friends? It's just how quickly can you lose all your friends right, on right. Facebook? Yeah. Uh, what do you think, uh, Chris? Well... I think the suggestions there would actually gain you friends on Facebook. That's, what uh, I'm that's thinking. true, that's true. It wouldn't work. There's the format's fundamentally flawed. Yeah. Not commissioned. Well, take it the other way, maybe. Also, I'm worried that Facebook is going to be a bit passe. You're right, it's all about Bebo now. Or it's no, but it's not about Bebo anymore. It's about Wizbot or something Wizbot. that we haven't even thought of yet. So, no, no commission, Chris. Not from me, no. Not Social from me. That, you make a good commissioning editor. You have a very mild manner. Mm. And even if you were rejecting someone, you'd do it very softly. Yeah. Tell us, how, how would you reject the person who came up with that show? It's a good idea. Mm. I don't think it's BBC Three material. That's exactly that good. That's what they said to you, isn't That's it? Exactly what they said. It's to exactly me. what they said. And to they you. said it in that. Voice. Don't do that big grin and laugh <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> That's not so polite. Yeah. Do you want except, another one? Sit with me. They held up two fingers as well. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. Oh, that's the, how kids respect, offer respect And then, days. as I was walking out the door, they blew a giant raspberry. Um, so, have you got any one more? One more? Would yeah. you like one more? Because I've got one more. Yeah, go on. Uh, this is from Chris Cribbins. Is it from Loughborough? I don't know. He's being weird about his name. I don't understand what it is. How about a show featuring all of the characters from the populous OP Stenders who've died? Mm. And they're wandering around in the afterlife. Some could be in limbo. Perhaps they could haunt the current cast members. Some of them could have gone to heaven, Ethel, or is she dead in real life? But I imagine most have ended up in hell. And it would be called Dead Enders, of course. Nice. He started with the title there, hasn't he? Probably, yeah. I would think. And then he's, you see, there's not nearly enough sex or... Um... No, that's a sort of BBC4 show. That's quite a sophisticated uh, proposition, isn't it? Yeah, I think also a lot of the dead characters are older. Uh, very true. You see, Chris, you are so on the ball. 
So Chris Saltz, the head of programming for BBC Three, <laughs> has flushed that down the BBC Three toilet. Have we got together any with of... all the other good ideas? What though? we need is some kind of chat show. Uh, is That's there what any? We do. I, I tell you what, I'll go through the uh, the submissions again and try and get some stronger ideas for you. Uh, there's nothing. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's have some more music while you're doing that. How do you feel about the Flaming Lips, Chris? My favourite band. Are they seriously? I do actually quite like them. Yeah. yeah you like a little bit of. Uh, flaming lip action so here is oh this is you don't really like this one that much do you what Joe? is this one this is the one do you realize everyone you know is gonna no this gets i this makes me annoyed because i do <laughs> realize it but i don't like to think about it all the time especially not whilst having a party with people dressed as animals and balloons being kicked around <laughs> well tough luck uh <laughs> it's three and a half minutes of it <clears throat> flaming lips with do you realize um now chris were you listening to the show last week? Yes. Uh, we played a fun game there based on the little uh, entertainment um, mag you get when you fly on uh, any aeroplane. If you're going long distances, you know, uh, yep. one of the fun things is you go on there and you find out what, what movies there are to watch and you read the synopses. And uh, I was reading out some of the synopses of movies, and Joe was trying to guess what those movies were. Also, I was slipping in a couple of synopses for movies that didn't exist and seeing yeah. if Joe could suss it out. I mean, that was a fun game, was it not? It was great. Should we play it again now? Let's. Jolly good. Um, so, Joe and Chris, uh, you're both able to take part in this, and this becomes a kind of amazing competition now, of course. Right. Uh, are you ready? Yep, ready. Yep. Okay, here we go. So we've got to tell whether these are real films or not from the synopses. Yeah. Easy peasy peasy. Here we go. Um, after starting an affair with a younger woman, unhappily married Harry decides to murder his wife to spare her the humiliation of a divorce. Did I read that one last week? No. I can't remember. Anyway, there you go. I think that's real. Yeah. I think that's called uh, ha The Trouble with Harry... Harry, Harry's hairy hands, something like that. <laughs> that is real. That's called Married Life. Well, that is called yeah. Married Life. And it stars Chris Cooper married. and Pierce Bronholm. Wow, that's a must-see. Uh, and Patricia Clarkson. No! <laughs> married Life! So that's your favourite um, actor, Joe. In, in, that's in correct. A, Give in us another one. Fun sounding. OK, here we go. Uh, now, I noticed that there were... Uh, there's quite a lot of films around, maybe not quite a lot, but I noticed that, that some of my favourite films basically uh, end up, the twist is that the, the devil is working for them, or they are working for the devil. Like, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, can you give me a couple of... Devil's Advocate. Exactly. With K K Canoe Reeves. Love that film. Uh, uh, Usual Suspects is a bit like that. Yeah. No, they just mentioned he's a bit like the devil at one point. Uh, Lots of other devil films. The Exorcist, see. of course, it turns out that they're working for the devil at the end. Rosemary's Baby, kind of. Angel Heart. Angel Heart. Is it? I've ruined it now for anyone who hasn't seen it. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good example. Um, so there might be some devil ones in here, you know, because uh, <laughs> that's the classic. You've kind of given it away now, though, haven't you? I have. As I was saying it, I realised I was giving it away. Like an idiot. <laughs> Are you all right, Adam? <laughs> no, I've had a little bit of a minor breakdown. <laughs> you seem to have gone half to sleep. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a, here's a synopsis. When an engineer is found innocent of the attempted murder of his wife, the young district attorney, who is prosecuting him, becomes a crusader for the devil. <gasps> Why would he be a crusader? That's very left field, isn't it, Chris Salt? It is, yes. To bring the devil into the synopsis there. All of a sudden, <laughs> oh, I don't know. This, this competition is going wrong. Has a sort of moribund <laughs> atmosphere to it's it. It's going all wrong. I if, just if changed. I changed the last word of of the synopsis. I like the idea of a of a of a game show host that just loses interest <laughs> in the game and the format <laughs> about thirty seconds into the program. I just. <laughs> Completely lost interest. <laughs> they picked up the magazine just um, without thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, listen. Let's 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 work hard and prepare them. You don't want me to carry it's gonna on. It's going to be a really good. How about this one? <laughs> 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 Push, man. Come on. Okay, okay. Based on real events. This drama follows two Mexican puppeteers who, convinced 
the prince of uh, who convinced the prince of denmark <laughs> they were descendants of christ <laughs> <laughs> well that sounds a bit too sophisticated for you to have made up i thought you were going to say the prince of darkness it was going to be another satan no. one chris what do you think real or fake i think it's a fake yes <laughs> <laughs> okay this is uh, six music this is adam and joe it's time for a trail then then a bit of music a young dental shut nurse. up Sets up on it. It's all about the bass on that one. And, the, you know, the bass player doesn't have to work too hard. He's only got, like, three notes there that he's doing. But it makes the whole track come alive. That's the And that's the power of the bass. Yeah, that was The Cure with a Forest uh, from 1980. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music, where uh, we have a special guest in the studio, Chris Salt, the winner of the Video Wars competition. Chris, what do you think of the music on the show today? Um, it's interesting. What I'm not actually of... hearing a lot of it, right. because the sound goes down. Uh, it's in the cans, studio. that's true. Yeah. As a listener at home, do you think that the music in the show is is good, generally? Is it your kind of thing? <coughs> is it your kind yeah, of be absolutely honest? absolutely my favourite thing in the world. You can be honest, man. Right. You can, you can, can say... be honest. Six Music, it's one of the last uh, stations around that have a bit of freedom in their yeah. eclecticism, in their playlist. Do you think it's, do you think that's holding up well? Yeah, I think I, I actually prefer the free play stuff, because that's a bit more kind of... Off the beaten track. Yeah, yeah. Um, what if a song Thompson comes twins. on? Yeah, you like the. So you Thompson like the Thompson Twins. Oh, sure, why not? Yeah. And what if a track comes on that you absolutely loathe? You just think, ah, oh, I can't be bothered with this. What do you do? Say, say some, say some Oasis. Does, does that make you switch over, or does that, or do you, you're not fast? Uh, you just kind work, of weather it. If I'm listening again, I'm just going to fast forward just a tiny bit. Ah, the listen again. Do, but once you're doing listen again, do, do you not find that the fast forwarding thing is quite difficult? You get into deep water, maybe the thing will crash on you if you start fast forwarding? Yeah, it can be a bit of a problem, but yeah. I generally only do that if it's something I really hate. Right. So you'd encourage, as a listener, you'd encourage the six music management to, put, to let the DJs play more of their own choices <laughs> during the daytime. <laughs> Would you say that's true? Listeners yes, like, yes, yeah, so. yes, yeah. Brilliant. Um, so listen, in a second we're going to do some more uh, text the nations, but first, just as a quick thing to say, we should thank a listener who has responded to an old text the nation, which was to design uh, slogans for stupid t-shirts. The listener, and I've got the letter here somewhere, here it is, his name was James Broad, and I think he must run some kind of t-shirt company that we're not allowed to uh, read out, of course, this being the castle, but he's uh, from East 17 in London, and he's sent to Alan Sugar holding a jazz cigarette with the words you're fried underneath it t-shirts he's done the whole design he's got sugar's likeness he's got an authentic looking jazz cigarette and a lovely typography the t-shirts are a beautiful yellow they're fruit of the loom or something and it's that he sent two of them in isn't that brilliant yeah man what's he, his name again he's his name's james broad he says hi chaps hope you like these as a reward i will accept the playing of some jazz fusion on the show <laughs> so, so next week i'm going to bring in some jazz fusion James, a bit of I like a report. bit of fusion as well, yeah. So we'll definitely uh, pay you back for those, but that's brilliant. One of the best things we've ever been sent. We'll and also, pride. yeah, we'll take a picture of uh, of ourselves <coughs> wearing them. And pop it up on the webbles. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that after the show, so maybe you'll be able to see us wearing the T-shirts mm. uh, sometime next week. That'll be exciting for people to enjoy going on the web. <laughs> <laughs> people now, Joe, for whom going on the web in itself is exciting. Here is a free play for you right now, Chris. This is courtesy of Joe. Yeah, this is some hip-hop. Do you like hip-hop? I do, yeah. Spoken word over over beats, mainly. Yes, it's very popular street, with the street level music. Yeah, exactly. Yes. This is uh, Master Ace with Me and the Biz. There's Master Ace, Me and the Biz. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for the news and music news, read by Catherine and Elizabeth. Uh, the GFOS with Papa's got a brand new bag. This From is... 65. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a year. What a year. Oh, what a year. Uh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's time to wrap up the nation's favourite feature right now. Why don't we have the jingle one more time? Could you supply us with the uh, alternative jingle there, Claire? Oh, hmm, just to keep you on your toes? Keep on. <laughs> Her toes are broken. Um, I can't. Okay, don't worry about it. Let's have the normal one. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. 
Text the Nation this week, listeners, is all about uh, B- new BBC Three shows, shows that target the youth democratic democratic demographic, the kind of thing that young people want to want to watch, right? The youth democratic. So we're going to do some speed commissioning now. I'm going to riffle through some ideas, and I'd like a, a very fast response from Chris Salt. Uh, who's our guest today, who is head of programming right. at BBC Three, <laughs> and Adam Buxton, who's, who's a Six Music presenter. Hello. Which doesn't mean much. Here we go. This one is from an anonymous person known only as JPM68. I'm pitching an idea for a hit show called I Get By With A Little Help From My Friends, in which a heterosexual member of the public is offered the chance to become bisexual by sleeping with two members of the cast of Friends. One male, one female. The show will then diversify for a more cultural angle by changing the theme ever so slightly, with the actors then attempting to make the contestants bilingual and any other variant of the word bi that could drag the show on for years. Now, it might be difficult to get the cast of Friends, so we could scale that down and say the cast of Gavin and Stacey. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, or two pints Even of lager. Even that's difficult. Two pints of lager might be more achievable. But I get by with a little help from my friends. What do you think? Speed, speed commissioning. No. no. Salt no. says no. You know, you don't have to call it with a little help from my face. You just call it, I get by. Yeah. You can do and, that. Is that uh, a commission? Yeah, I like it. I'm going to commission that. Six Music have commissioned that. So if, yeah. it, if it takes off on Six Music, we might go to three. Yeah. Here's one from Nick Muldoon. He says, Kate Nash and enemies. Exciting youth from all different social scenes. Naturally, one being promiscuous and another from a violent gang who all loathe Kate Nash equally discuss films, pop music, and existentialist philosophy. So that's a confusing one. He seems to be in New York. He's saying that instead of Lily Allen and Friends, you would have Kate Nash and Enemies. Right. Everyone so you'd be surrounded by... Um, united by haters. their... Like, yeah. I don't... Well... Do you I think that would create I, a more frictional and exciting atmosphere in the studio? It seems very mean-spirited. I don't think she has the any kids enemies. Kids are mean-spirited. Doesn't have any enemies. No, I think everyone loves Kate Nash. Do you think? Yeah, pretty sure. So that's a no, isn't it? Well, I think it's a little. There's got too many issues there. Okay, Dale, who is a 16 to 24 year old, proposes a show called Make Me a BBC Three Viewer. A frustrated 25 <laughs> year old is annoyed at having to miss out on all the sweary BBC Three goodness. <laughs> a hip, t- a hip team of 16 to 24 year olds are brought in to show this over the hill wannabe how to get down with the kids and adap- adapt his lifestyle in order to be allowed to view the channel again. He grows his hair, wears skinny jeans, starts to casually swear. And he's allowed to stay within the demographic for another year until the uh, trends change. I like that one. Yeah? Yeah. So, 24-year-olds doing a makeover on a fogeyish 25-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah, that's a go. Yeah. That's a go. Well done. And finally, maybe Ross Foley from Edinburgh. His pitch is Little Kiss. Little Chris, you know Little Chris? I'm aware of him. Yeah, you're a big fan of him, probably. Hosts a dating show in which a group of screaming goth girls compete in challenges. Sexy rock climbing, sexy chess, sexy golf. (laughs) Each... Each of which are set out to test their dating credentials. What sexy chess? It's naked. The winner's prize is a short tour around London with fern cotton, followed by the opportunity to kiss little Chris a little bit whilst riding on the London Eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Come on. Where's the one with Danny Dyer? All right, look, here's a better one. Matt in Sheffield, future phone phone. A teenage gang steals an experimental mobile phone from a government laboratory. Once activated, the phone has amazing ringtones, knife skills, and jump really high. <laughs> <laughs> All is cool, and then the phone gets popular, but then it gets pregnant by Bluetooth, and the gang have to look after its phone. It's getting silly. I like the way uh, that, the, yeah, that the, the pitch is written as well. The actual language and the grammar. Right, without yeah. proper w- language yeah. or grammar. But the I, idea of a gang stealing an experimental government mobile it. phone is good. Love it. That's really good. That's We're going to throw s- all the annual budget at that one idea. Yeah, okay. some CGI dinosaurs as well. I like yes. it. Yes. It's in. There we go. So a couple of commissions. There was is one as well though? about the chat show with Danny Dyer... With no actual guests, just Danny Dyer um, slagging off other actors and getting in fights with the audience. <laughs> I thought that was a good idea. I would watch that, definitely. That is a good idea. What's, What's that thing? called? Uh, I can't remember. There, someone sent that one in, didn't they? They had an idea, the, a name for it and everything. I'll try and find it. Anyway, thank you very much indeed, listeners, for all your ideas for those BBC Three shows. If we do get any of them commissioned, we'll cut you in for some of the money. Don't worry about that. Um, it's exciting stuff. We'll let you know uh, how our progress progresses. Are we playing Keen now, or is this my choice? A bit of Keen. Have you heard this one before, Chris? I haven't. Uh, this is sort of a... a, a, a it sounds like an 80s tribute song almost and it's called spiraling by the mighty keen 
It's got hit written all over it. It reeks of hit, and uh, I mean that in a good way. Keen with spiralling. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. What are you looking puzzled about there? I'm Jim? just wondering what elements of that song make it so 80s. It's the it's the synths, it's is it? and, that. and the synth bass. It's a bit keep feeling fascination, isn't it, by the Human League? We discussed that last week, yeah, I think. Yeah, the bass, yeah. The squidgy 80s bass bass line. <laughs> also, the drums. Those big crashy crashy drums, drums yeah. they had in the eighties, which yeah. I personally did not enjoy, and was pleased when they phased them out. Right, but They're coming back, Keen have brilliantly uh, brought them back from that. The had a touch of the Collins garage. about it, even didn't it? Right. Next week when we play Phil Collins, even though we've discovered that Stephen Merchant played Susudio on his show, he's last always week, one step ahead. He's ahead of the curve, if not five steps. I think ahead. we're very on point with this uh, Collins comeback. Yeah, I think it's going to be. I think Phil Collins, you should do. <laughs> <laughs> Iron your shirt, because hey. you're going to be back. <laughs> uh, now, here's a little free play for you. Well, I had another free play that has not been included in the show this week. I mean, I did submit four, admittedly. <laughs> but uh, I noticed it hasn't been chosen, and it was uh, Blue Dabadi by Eiffel what? 65. <laughs> Thank God that didn't get chosen. Well, do you remember that clearly? Because yes. Because it's a little portion of musical history yes. that I'd forgotten about <laughs> like completely. Like the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's true, it shouldn't be forgotten, but in no way should it be reenacted. I'm blue. Da -da -de -da -de. I, I couldn't remember how it went here. exactly, and suddenly it popped back into my head, and I thought, ooh, I'd like to hear that one again. Um... <laughs> I'm going to insist that it's played next week instead. If you play that, I'm going to literally start yeah. smashing the consoles. <laughs> Do you remember the video with the little... I'm going to go over there and I'm going to force my own Thompson Twin CD in. <laughs> with, the CD, with the CG little alien then. And they were blue. It was about... Uh, it was at number one. <laughs> about six weeks, wasn't it? That's no indication of anything. I'm blue, never dee. The long, In fact, it's well known, the longer a record is at number one, the worse it is. Right. Anyway, so we're not playing that. Here is a lovely track, however, by a R and B by band by Scooch from, <laughs> from 1965 or thereabouts. Ruby and the Romantics. This is kind of a Radio Two style song, but you know, taken out of context within the amazing walls of. Oh, I'm just rambling now, aren't I? This is uh, Our Day Will Come by Ruby and the Romantics. That's Susie and the Banshees with Hong Kong Garden, uh, which was recorded live for the BBC sometime last century 1978 yeah well if you want to be specific <laughs> 1978 then uh, that's pretty much it for our show this week thank you very much indeed to everybody who texted us and emailed don't forget you can listen to the whole program again on the listen again feature on the bbc uh, six music website you can also download the podcast which will be available sometime tomorrow evening uh, sunday evening Thank you so much to Chris Salt, who came in, the video, the winner of our Video Wars competition, who's been sitting with us all week, uh, all week, <laughs> all day. It feels like a week. Yeah. And uh, don't forget, you can see his winning video, the Lego video for Jane's Brain on the Six Music website. Chris, final thoughts? <laughs> uh, would well, you how, like... How's it gone? Have you, have, have you enjoyed being here? I have, yes. It's been fun. Yeah, what, is he, what do you think of Adam and me? <laughs> 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 what do you think of Adam? I think... Adam's touching was better than yours, I have to I'd say. I'd never even touched you yet. Did he touch you? I touched him in the studio. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blow, blimey. <laughs> That's a very sensitive area. Liz Kershaw is going to be with you shortly, listeners, and we are going to allow Chris to choose the final track that we play in our show today. What have you chosen, Chris? I've chosen a track that came up on my generic MP3 player nice. shuffle function um, on the way down on the train. Yeah. It's 500, brackets, shake, baby, shake close brackets by lush by lush so enjoy this we'll be back with you next week yeah thanks for listening thanks to everybody who's texted and emailed um is that it that's it sounds like you week. were going somewhere else but yeah. here's lush take care listeners bye, bye.